The military strategist Sun Tzu once wrote, The skillful leader subdues the enemy troops without any fighting. He captures their cities without laying siege to them. Clearly, warfare during the era of Sun Tzu did not have the conquest victory setting enabled. If you're playing on the ranked ladder or in the vast majority of games in Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition, the importance of siege has been demonstrated time and time again. Siege weapons destroy your fortifications, production buildings, and castles, leaving you vulnerable to invaders. Bolts from scorpions or stones hurled by mangonels have annihilated many a crossbowman. In many cases, the enemy even uses their own siege weapons to attack yours. Siege warfare can win or lose games. Using your siege weapons appropriately can turn the tide of battle in your favor. But on the other hand, siege weapons, which are extremely expensive, if they are carelessly allowed to be destroyed or taken by enemy forces, this can prove fatal to the war effort where those resources would have been better allocated elsewhere. In this video, we're going to discuss the importance of siege and rank the civilizations in AoE 2 DE in accordance with their ability to practice siege warfare. Understanding your own civilization, as well as the civilizations of your opponents and teammates, will bring you one step closer to victory. So whether you're playing chill games or grinding the ladder, or you just want to learn more about this game that we all love, by the end of this video, you will be equipped with the knowledge to go get out there and get after it. What's going on everybody, it's Jimmy James 59 here, and we have a very interesting tier list video coming at you before we jump into it, as uh, I will activate sellout mode. If you like the video, you like the channel, uh, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, so that way when you garrison yourself down to your town center, you can enjoy some Jimmy James 59 tier list and some other interesting content that uh, we got planned uh, down the road. So what I want to do is get into the tier list, and uh, as normal, I'm going to start off with a little bit of a preamble here, and... Uh, and oh, I'll also say this before we jump in. Uh, shout out to uh, Ornlu, who I lifted this tier list from his video. Uh, it was in his description. <laughs> I didn't notice it, and he was kind enough to not uh, hit me too hard on uh, being a lazy reviewer. Um, but uh, this is uh, something that was uh, made for him. And so shout out to the people who made it, and, uh, and shout out to him for uh, hooking me up with it. So now let's get in the video. <laughs> What I want to do is I want to set the stage a little bit. So the thing is with siege weapons is that siege is a really important part of the game as I established in the intro. And so I want to break down the different siege weapons though. So I want to think first about the battering ram um, and start off with the ram line. So the thing to know about battering rams is that they're a bit wood intensive in terms of their cost, but they're not very gold intensive. Um, they have a lot of pierce armor. You can garrison units inside of them. And what they're really doing is that you are you going to be using rams to attack buildings and they're also actually very effective against siege weapons you can see that with the statistics here they do have an attack bonus against siege so that is worth keeping in mind um but now if we take a look at the upgrades right not all civilizations get these upgrades we'll talk about that in a minute but you can see in general what's happening is that you're just getting some uh you know improvements as you're going along Interesting to note the speed ram is a little bit faster than the captor ram. Uh, I didn't actually know that before I looked it up, but I felt like I actually always had a sort of intuitive sense of it. The really interesting thing about the ram is the cost, actually. Uh, the captor ram costs 300 food to upgrade, and the siege ram costs 1,000 food to upgrade. So the fact that your upgrades are not costing gold is actually pretty cool. And uh, so this is primarily a building killer, but also if you can get it close to... Other siege units can take them out pretty quickly. All right, next up, we're going to move on to the uh, the Mangonel line. And the Mangonel is an interesting unit. Um, you know, it hurls, uh, you know, basically big stones, as you can see in the, the picture of it. And it does have an attack bonus against buildings. And it's pretty good against other siege weapons as well. Um, you can also see it's pretty gold intensive. And... 
What it's doing is it has a blast radius that it fires in, and that enables it to kill multiple units at once, right? So it can be very, very effective. Another thing to notice is the minimum range on the unit. Um, that's something you want to keep in mind. So if units close in and get, uh, you know, you know, right up on you playing that, you know, uh, you know, Gary Payton glove style defense, uh, you could uh, not be able to use it very well. Now, if we take a look at the upgrades, uh, really important to note is the severe cost of these upgrades. So it's already a wood intensive and a gold intensive unit. Uh, the upgrade to Onager is 800 food, 500 gold, and the upgrade to Siege Onager, 1,450 food and 1,000 gold. <laughs> That's a lot. So you're going to want to, you're going to want to keep that in mind if you, if you're deciding whether to upgrade this unit, keep in mind, do you need Siege Onager? Are you going to make it worthwhile? Because, and actually, can you protect these units? Because if you spend all of those resources upgrading into Siege Onager and you wind up, say, getting them sniped by bombard cannons or enemy light cavalry or something like that, then that's, uh, you know, you, you, you may have cost yourself the game with a decision like that. So that really is just something that uh, you're going to want to keep in mind uh, and how you need the unit. Okay, so next up, we're going to move on to one of the other mainline units from the Siege Workshop, and that's the Scorpion. Um, one of the things that you might notice in the Scorpion is so much cheaper, right? It's not that wood intensive or gold intensive for a Siege weapon, uh, but it's doing pierce damage with its attack. And so um, you're going to want to keep that in mind, what kind of units you're up against. The Scorpion's claim to fame is that it damages opponents behind the opponent you're actually attacking at. So its bolt is going in a straight line. So instead of a blast radius, you might think of it more like a like a blast cylinder or something where it's going straight. And so it's going to be doing half damage to opponents behind the unit you hit. So, you know, the, the damage, the actual number here is probably a little understated in some cases because if you have a big scrum of units, right, this is this is similar to the uh, the the mangonel line. Um, a big scrum of units, you're going to damage multiple units, uh, but you're going to be damaging them, damaging them using a different kind of attack. And if we take a look at the upgrades here, uh, the big thing to notice about the upgrade, I think, is that it only costs food and wood. So if you're teching into it, it, again, might be a little bit more affordable for you to take into it in the late game, where food and wood are typically uh, not resources that there is a, uh, a lack of at that time. Okay, next get into the Bombard Cannons. Um, bombard Cannons, as you can see, very expensive in wood and gold. I think it's the most expensive unit in the game, actually. And not only that, but it requires chemistry to research. So, and chemistry itself is a 300 food, 200 gold technology, but more importantly, it researches very slowly. So, the early imp power spikes with Bombard Cannons are probably, for most civs in the game, are not going to be able to do it. And uh, it is more of a, a little bit, you know, it takes a little bit of time to take into them. You can see they have good hit points. They have a lot of different attack bonuses. Uh, they can deal with buildings well. They deal with siege weapons very well, especially because of their range, right? The the range is really the big thing on a Bombard Cannon 12 range. And one if uh, the unit has, or rather the civilization has uh, siege engineers. So they also to keep in mind that the unit, in terms of its armor class, is also considered a gunpowder unit. So... Anything that, say, counters gunpowder uh, or a bonus that would give, you know, gunpowder units some sort of advantage would uh, will be applicable here. Now, a unit that's not going to go into the tier list as a factor is the Siege Tower. Uh, Siege Towers, uh, basically, uh, you can garrison units inside of them and allow them to jump over walls as long as it's only a one-tile thick wall. And... Uh, which is actually not often the case, uh, practically speaking. But the reason it's not going to be in the tier list is that it's really not a siege weapon. You know, it's like a siege vehicle. So uh, we're not going to factor it into the tier list. But I did want to bring it up just to make sure that I covered it. Okay, lastly, uh, in terms of the main siege weapons, let's talk about the trebuchet. Uh, you know, you might compare it to a bombard cannon in that it has, you know, similar costs. It's a little bit cheaper. You make them from castles, though. And it's doing a lot of attack, and it's really useful against buildings. Um, that's really 
its specialty. Something to keep in mind, and I actually didn't notice until I looked up uh, the unit and researched it a bit more in depth, is that the melee and pierce armor on the unit changes whether it's packed or unpacked. So in the picture you see it's packed, which means it's able to move around, but in order to fire, trebuchets have to unpack, and that takes a little bit of time. And an unpacked trebuchet has very, uh, very little melee armor, uh, and actually not that much pierce armor. However, when you unpack it, the melee armor goes a little bit down, and the pierce armor increases dramatically. So if you have archer units, you know, you might think about that, you know, if you see a packed trebuchet, right, you might be used to firing on them and not much damage being done. But if it's packed, you should be able to take it out pretty quickly. And lastly, it is, uh, when it's unpacked, it puts it in the ram armor class. So that means that units that do extra bonus damage to uh, siege rams, I'm thinking of unique units like the... Mangadai or the Magyar Hussar, uh, they're going to do a bit more damage to to trebuchets when they're unpacked than when they're packed because they uh, have a bonus against siege weapons and then a little extra bonus against rams. So it's very interesting. Um, but what this does is it really takes us to uh, the considerations that we're going to make about the unit. And uh, actually, I'll get into the tiers in just a second. So in thinking about siege weapons, I want to think, what do siege weapons do? And really what they do is three main things. They destroy enemy buildings, they eliminate massed formations, and they counter siege weapons. And when it comes to it destroying enemy buildings, basically all the siege weapons do this with really the exception of the scorpion, right? It's a pretty big weakness there. So scorpions are not going to destroy buildings, right? Now, on the other hand, uh, Eliminating massed infantry formations, right? This is the realm where uh, onagers are going to be able to do this very well. Scorpions as well. And something to keep in mind about those units is that onagers can do friendly fire. So if your units are in a scrum with some other units, you might want to think twice about launching an onager shot into that pile. Or with scorpions, uh, you can fire at will. Now, bombard cannons are not usually as good at countering masses of units, um, you, you can, and you can take out units from range sometimes, but it's, it's the blast radius is generally not what it should be. Um, but you still can take out maybe small groups of say, you know, skirmishers or archers or something like that. It could still be done, but just not to the same level of effectiveness as a uh, scorpion or an onager. Um, and then countering other siege weapons, right? So rams, if they can get close enough, counter all siege weapons, Onagers are very good, uh, especially against Siege Rams. Um, bombard Cannons, that's really their specialty here. Uh, they do a nice damage against, a bonus damage against buildings, but they they do, uh, they do they are really good with their range at countering Siege Weapons. Uh, and then Trebuchet Wars, like Trebuchet is uh, one of the, you know, one of the uh, a most common situations you often find is that two enemy Trebuchets trying to snipe one another and take out one another's castles uh, so that that way they can win what we call treb wars and uh and hold, be able to hold positions and then advance on positions and being able to win treb wars is really really important in age of empires uh and so that's a a high valued uh, uh ability we're gonna put some emphasis on so we're gonna keep those things in mind uh and also something i haven't mentioned as much here the technology siege engineers uh basically it extends the range of your siege by one and it increases the bonus damage against buildings by about 20 percent so uh, it'll give you extra range to better, say, uh, deal with enemy siege or attack units uh, or also uh, destroy buildings. So it is really helping you in uh, all three of these areas. And so um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm not going to go through all of the the tiers exactly. But basically the thing to know, and you can pause this video if you really want to read all of this. Um, but what there is to know is that. Esther civilizations are going to be very, very dominant, very dominant uh, in a lot of different areas. And uh, and as we go down, either the siege workshop and was just going to be more generic and maybe even have some flaws. Uh, and then when we go all the way down to the D tier, um, there really is no civilization in the game that has awful siege in every capacity. Um so, so that means, again, a tier list is more of a relative ranking. So having one option makes you, especially if it's kind of a generic option, 
that's a great way to fall into the D tier. But the siege is obviously still usable. So so don't think that just because a civilization's in D tier, you never want to make siege with it. In fact, actually, I think actually be if they do make another civilization that actually lacked the siege workshop, uh, that would be a really interesting civilization. It might be hard to balance. So, but uh, I don't know if you, I don't know, maybe somebody else has thoughts about that. That would be really interesting to hear. And if you have any thoughts on that or anything else in this video, go ahead and leave a comment in the uh, comment section below. So, but anyways, so that's what we're going to think about when we, when it comes to the, uh, to our siege weapons here. And yeah, so I think we're about ready to get started on this beautiful tier list that has these civilization names under the icons for all of our enjoyment and benefit. All right, so we're going to start off with the Aztecs. And what about the Aztecs in the A tier? Um, Aztecs have a pretty nice siege workshop where you have things like siege onagers, siege rams, right? So we have two really nice options, and we're covering our bases in a lot of ways. You do get the siege engineer technology, uh, and you have a great economy. And that's uh, really, that's a lot to get you into the, the A tier right there. The only thing, right, you, you have a little bit of weaknesses uh, when it comes to missing bombard cannons. And you do like heavy scorpions. Now with Aztecs, you typically might go, say, champions or jaguar warriors, say, to counter uh, sort of bulk infantry spam. Because remember, heavy scorpions do well against massed units, massed infantry units especially. So uh, missing heavy scorpion means you might have to replace that with another unit. Aztecs do have some units that can do that though. Um, and you're also missing halberdiers and against enemy cavalry, say bearing down on your siege, missing, missing halberdiers might, even with the Garland Wars technology researched, might get a little bit tricky or maybe in some halb versus halberdier fights, uh, Having Garland Wars usually helps compensate for that, but you are going to be uh, usually having a little bit less HP than fully upgraded Halberdiers, uh, but you'll have a little bit more attack. So it could shake out in some different ways, but it's more than not having quite as much bonus damage against Cavalry, um, but still still a decent unit. Like Aztec Pikemen are still, uh, they the the they make up for it uh, with the Garland Wars technology. Maybe not all the way, but at least partially. And your military production buildings work faster as Aztecs anyways, so you generally can get to a pretty decent mass. So I think that's enough for the A tier. They just have, you know, a few weaknesses here or there that I do think puts them in a slightly lower class than the S tier, but still very strong. Okay, next up we have the Berbers. And I think the Berbers, uh, for me, are going to have to go into the C tier. The thing with Berbers is that you're pretty reliant on bombard cannons. Uh, you, know, you do have bombard cannons with Siege Engineers, you do get heavy scorpions, uh, which is nice, um, but you don't get halberdiers to protect your siege weapons. You can make cheap camels, maybe, you know, that's, but that's, you know, even if they're cheaper, it's still kind of gold intensive. You lack siege ram and you don't really have in much of an eco bonus. So I see this as a civilization that is pretty reliant on the, their bombard cannons to do a lot of the job. But Heavy Scorpion is covering... I gotta think about this. Oh, two sieves in the video, and I'm already reordering the tier list. Uh, but, I mean, the Bombard Cannon can deal with enemy siege and enemy buildings pretty decently. And you do get Siege Engineers, and you get Heavy Scorpion to deal with massed infantry. So they do kind of cover their bases. I think that might be enough to get them into the B tier, actually, right? And again, I might modify some of these. As I change my mind on this a lot. So uh, take all of this as just my opinion. Uh, I hope it's more the the thinking process of this, which is why I'm willing to make these videos a little bit longer so you can hear more of the thought process. Um, I think it's the thought process that is more important as opposed to uh, and, and how civilizations are ranked relative to one another than uh, necessarily rigidly adhering to a tier list because you can make arguments uh, for multiple tiers, I think, for many of the civs in the game. Not all of them, but many of them. Okay, next up, we do have the Bohemians. And I think Bohemians are an S-tier civ uh, when it comes to Siege. You have the... And it really comes down to their unique units in that you have the Hufnisa, which is a uh, basically an upgrade of the Bombard Cannon that kind of combines the qualities of an onager and a bombard cannon into a bombard cannon. It's very expensive, but if you can get to it, it's amazing. 
You do get Siege Engineers to make them really powerful. You have a unique unit called the Hussite, Wap, Wap, the, the Hussite Wagon, and it's basically a Siege unit that does pretty good damage, and that when you put it in front of other units, it can protect them. So that's pretty strong as well. You have really good Halberdiers that do extra bonus damage to defend your Siege. You have Heavy Scorpion. You have a really nice gold mining bonus and free mining upgrades. I mean, the only real issue is that you are missing Siege Ram, but almost all of even the S-tier uh, civilizations here are going to have some kind of weakness. So that's really their one weakness. I think that's enough, though. The options they have can be so overpowering. I think that's enough to get them in the, uh, into the S-tier. Okay, next up, uh, Britons. I'm going to put Britons in the B-tier, actually. Um, so... And the Britons get into the B tier less because of their more general options, but more because they have a really, really strong option in the Warwolf technology that they can research in Imperial Age. Uh, allows their uh, trebuchets to do splash damage, which makes them 100% uh, accurate. Um, siege weapons are are have a lot of accuracy against buildings. They always hit buildings, but when it comes to actually, say, winning treb wars, trebuchets can be really, really inaccurate. And so... The fact that, you know, Warwolf gives Britain Trebs that big advantage. I mean, you can you can win Treb Wars with Warwolf Trebs. Um, and that's something unique that not a lot of civilizations can say. You do also get Siege Engineers. So that's really useful. So, you know, the Britons are one of those civilizations that, you know, they're missing Siege Ram, they're missing Siege Onager, and their eco bonuses are more geared towards early game and booming and that kind of thing, which can help your Siege Workshop a bit. But, um it still, I think it's geared gears them in a bit different direction, but the Wolf Trebuchets, I think that gets them into the B tier. All right, next up, Bulgarians. Uh, Bulgarians are going to wind up in the S tier, and what's really getting them in the S tier is they have a great set of options uh, with Siege Onager, Siege Ram, Heavy Scorpion, and Siege Engineers. They have uh, good Halberdiers and free two-handed swordsmen that can have a lot of melee armor. So you have all of the units to defend your siege and your siege weapon upgrades have a minus 50% food discount. All right, so we saw earlier just how much food you have to spend to upgrade to siege ram, to upgrade to onager and then siege onager. My goodness. Bulgarians are one of the few civs that in a 1v1 open map setting that's very aggressive can probably get to siege onagers and not bankrupt their treasury. So that is a massive, massive advantage for Bulgarians. And so I think that gets them in the S tier. That you are missing bombard cannons, so you're gonna want to be careful of that. But you know, Bulgarians also get great hussars to try and snipe bombard cannons. Uh heck, maybe even go Kalanek. And if the bombard cannon is defended by Halbs, it's gonna turn into a, a dismounted Kalanek and as an infantry and probably destroy those Halbs. So Bulgarians, no doubt in my mind, S tier. Okay, next up we have the the Burgundians, and I'm going to put them into the C tier, I think. Um, so here's the thing. You have Bombard Cannons that do extra, have extra range, Halberdiers, Great Economy, but you're missing Siege Engineers, right? So we can distinguish this, say, from a civilization like the Berbers, right, that does get Siege Engineers. Um, and you lack Siege Ram and Siege Onager, and basically Burgundians are pretty reliant on their really strong bombard cannon. Now, you got to keep in mind that because they miss siege engineers, right? Bombard cannons with siege engineers are probably going to be doing as much or more damage to buildings, right? So, when it comes to one of the major roles of bombard cannons, killing buildings, you're still not doing uh, you know, you're probably not doing that much better and you're going to have less range which can make your bombard cannons more uh, more vulnerable. And so I think that really knocks them down. It's a big downgrade, but it's still a really nice unit that they can go for. So uh, you probably do want to be going for Bombard Cannons. You just want to be able to recognize its limitations. Okay, Burmese also going to go into the C tier. Uh, bombard Cannon with Siege Onagers. You have Great Habadiers. Um, well, you know what? Actually, if I have Berbers in the B tier, I think I got to put Burmese in there to... I think I got to put Burmese in the B tier because you do, you have the really, really good infantry to be able to, to deal with, to be able to deal with enemy cavalry. And that is something that the, that the Berbers 
don't have. And you do get Siege Engineers. So, yeah, I, I got to say, you know, and and you do get Heavy Scorpion. So, yeah, I, you know what? I, I think that this I think that this really is an uh, I think this really is a, uh, a B tier sieve. Uh, we got to think about it that way. OK, next up, we have the Byzantines and the Byzantines. I'm going to put in the C tier, but I actually think that they are one of the stronger C tier sieves. So you're, you, you have Bombard Cannon and Siege Ram, and which is good. Very cheap Halberdiers, but you are missing Siege Engineers. So your Bombard Cannons are not going to be as strong against buildings, and neither will your Siege Ram. Uh, and they're not going to have the range. Um, you do have very good Halberdiers, right? They're very cheap to help you defend your Siege Weapons. So Siege, like Halb Siege Pushes with Byzantines is a really nice offensive option that you can kind of get on the cheap. It's just not as high a quality. And so it just means that your siege rams and your bombard cannons, you do have two options, but they kind of lag behind and you're missing siege onagers and heavy scorpion. Um, typically you'll probably try and go cataphract to deal with infantry spams from heavy scorpions. But, uh, but, um, you know, but even if you go onagers, you're going to miss siege engineers. And that means that, you know, Enemy Arbalist might be able to snipe your onagers before you can, uh, before you can unleash the hounds on them. So yeah, I, I think that takes them into the uh, into the C tier there. All right, next up we have we have the Celts and Celts are one of the best siege uh, workshops in the game. I mean, you get siege onager, siege ram, heavy scorpion, siege engineers. Your siege weapons fire faster. That includes the trebuchet. Your siege workshops work faster. You have an imperial technology that gives your siege workshop weapons more HP. Your lumberjacks work faster, getting you more wood. I mean, you are just set up to go with siege. Um, the only downside, right? The only flaw is you are missing bombard cannons. All right, so it's important to know uh, if you're up against Celts, right? You're probably going to want to be pretty reliant on bombard cannons to snipe Celt siege uh, in the late game. Okay, next up we have the Chinese, and Chinese are going to go into the C tier. Their siege is not that strong. You miss the Siege Engineers technology, you miss Siege Andre, you miss Bombard Cannons, and you do have Heavy Scorpions that their attack can be upgraded, and you do get Siege Rams, but again, the fact that you're missing Siege Engineers is going to cause uh, you know that to lag behind a little bit. Um, your technologies are a bit cheaper to research, so that is helpful, but you just don't have the options. You're pretty reliant. Uh, you're pretty reliant on just a few options here. Okay, next up we have the Cumans, and I'm gonna put the Cumans into the A tier actually. Um, now the Cumans again, these A tier civilizations don't necessarily have a flawless siege work, a flawless siege workshop, but they do have some really really strong plays and. Cubans do have Siege Ram and Siege Onager, which is great, uh, but you are missing Siege Engineers, and you are missing Heavy Scorpion and Bombard Cannon, so already this is starting to sound maybe more like a B-tier sieve, or maybe even a C-tier sieve, but the Celts have a unique bonus where they can build a Siege Workshop in Feudal Age and make Battering Rams, and in Castle Age, you can actually research the Cap Ram technology, so these really early ram siege pushes with cumans can be absolutely brutal and it's something you really need to watch out for it should be noted that in order to build a siege workshop you have to build a blacksmith first so you know if you're scouting in a, a cuman player's base and it's early feudal age and you see them putting down a blacksmith suspiciously early you might be looking at a feudal age ram push uh, something that can be very strong with cumans and uh and you're going to want to be careful. Um, it's a, uh, it's, and especially, I actually think that the capped ram push in castle age is probably the strongest feature because capped rams are quite good at taking out town centers and other, uh, fortifications. And so, uh, you, uh, you know, it's a, it's a very strong unit. And I think that that puts them in the A tier, despite that they are missing the siege engineers technology and a couple other siege weapons. Uh, it's, they have a really unique, uh, strategy they can play. Now, a civilization that misses virtually nothing, Ethiopians. Ethiopians have everything. You have uh, 
Siege Engineers, the technology, Siege Onager, Siege Ram, Heavy Scorpion, Bombard Cannon. You get the Torsion Engines technology, which increases the blast radius on your Siege weapons. I mean, they have the most complete Siege workshop in the game. The only knock against the Ethiopians, I think, is that your eco bonuses to help you get there are kind of mediocre, right? You're kind of mediocre. You don't have quite the military unit options, but hey, you do get halberdiers and you get free pikemen, so you can, you know, really do some nice early early pike uh, siege pushes with Ethiopians. It's that's pretty common. So, you know, it's a, it's a good civilization. It's it's a, it's a great siege civilization. Okay, next up, looks like we have the Franks, and Franks, I'm going to have to put into the C tier. You know, you do get, uh, you do get Bombard Cannons with, well, hold on, hold on. You know what, actually, I think i got to put them into the B tier. Um, you do get Bombard Cannons and Heavy Scorpions with Siege Engineers, and you, so you do cover your bases a little bit, um, and that's also going to help your Onagers out. Plus, you have Halberdiers and Throwing Axemen. And I think even though your economy is a little bit more geared towards, uh, you know, the food gold costing units, things like scouts or then scouts, uh, oh, the knights maybe later of the, of the costing gold. Um, I, th I think that, that the fact that you can cover your bases a little bit with Bombard Cannon and Heavy Scorpion and because, you know, Mass Pike may be a response to, say, Frank Knights and you don't have good skirmishers or archers with Franks. You, the fact that you have heavy scorpions and you can get siege engineers on them can actually be really important for a Frank army if you are trying to, uh, you know, cut through that mass of pikemen in order to allow your uh, cavaliers or paladins to raid. So I actually think, yeah, I actually got a on the fly that I think that's a B tier. Okay, next up we have the Goths and the Goths, I think. I think the Goths have to go. I think I got to put them into the D tier. And the the problem with them is so comparing them maybe even to something like the Berbers, right? Um, you do get Bombard Cannon and Heavy Scorpion, which is nice, but you're missing Siege Engineers. And you're also missing Siege Honors or Siege Ram. Um, and you just don't have a good eco bonus to help you get there. And so for me, the Goths are a civilization that you really just have two subpar options and i think heavy scorpions i rank a little bit lower i really think with i really think siege engineers is pretty important for your bombard cannons um because if you're making bombard cannons you generally have to do it at the exclusion of trebuchets because they're both so expensive and bombard cannons are a little bit more expensive and you generally have to decide what you're going to do and so if you're reliant if you're going to rely on bombard cannons and you're going to miss siege engineers that's a pretty big downgrade, um, and I think that's the kind of downgrade that really knocks them into the uh, into the D tier, especially when you have really no eco bonus to go with it. Okay, next up we have the Huns, and the Huns are extremely interesting, but I am going to put them in the C tier, despite that they have some really, really, really severe weaknesses in their Siege Workshop. So to start off with the bad, you do miss Siege Engineers, you miss Onager, Right, not just Siege Onager, but you also miss Onager. You miss Happy Scorpion, and you miss Bombard Cannons. And not only that, your Halberdiers miss the last armor upgrade, so they're pretty mediocre. Um, so, this is sounding like a D-tier civilization already. So, what lifts them up? Well, first thing is that you get Siege, you get siege Ram, and that's really nice. But the thing that really lifts Huns up is their Trebuchets are 30% more accurate. And Spirit of the Law, shout out to him, he's found that actually... In those treb war kind of situations, that 30% more accuracy really in practice winds up being more like 60% more accuracy. And that's massive. And so, and you don't have to research it, it's a civ bonus. And so, in those early Imperial Age trebuchet wars where you're trying to snowball that trebuchet advantage so that you can take down castles and start raiding your enemy's, uh, your enemy's base, very massive with Huns. And you can win a lot of early treb wars and snowball those pushes. So I think that that can be really dominant in a lot of situations. And you do also have siege ram. So, uh, you know, I think that that's enough to get Huns into the C tier. But you do need to know it is a very limited siege workshop. 
Okay, next up we have the Indians and Indians. Oh, not Indians, I'm sorry. Incas. Incas right here. I'm going to put Incas into the C tier. You do get Siege Engineers with Siege Ram and Heavy Scorpion. But you got to remember, right? Heavy Scorpion really is only doing one out of those three rolls well. And, and so you don't really have a Siege Weapon Killer here. Like... I mean, you, do, you can go Onagers with Siege Engineers, and that's fine. But missing Bombard Cannons, I think, is pretty important here. Um, and so I think that's going to drop them into the, the, into the C tier. Plus the fact that you have modest eco bonuses, but nothing but nothing to really help you tech into Siege. Okay, now we have the Indians. And Indians are going to go into D tier. I think there's a good comparison with... Uh, with Berbers here, actually, you have Bombard Cannons with Siege Engineers, but whereas Berbers had Heavy Scorpions, Indians don't, right? Indians also lack Siege Onagers and Siege Ram, and so what it means is that you're pretty reliant on, you know, Hand Cannoneers to, uh, to deal with any enemy infantry masses uh, because, you know, you don't get Knights, and you... You get pretty mediocre halberdiers or champions. So, you know, massive infantry can be really tough for Indians to deal with. That's one of the reasons why they tend to struggle against the American civs. And uh, and the only real option you have with Siege is your, uh, your Bombard Cannons. You can go Honors as a Siege Engineer. So you do at least have that. So it's not a bad. It's kind of, you, you kind of have two okay options. Okay. Uh, next up, we have the Italians and... I'm going to put Italians in the C tier. I think there are probably some people who would rank them higher because they do get Bombard Cannons at a at a discount. 25% cost discount, which is fantastic. Uh, but you are missing basically everything else. You don't get Siege Engineers. You don't get Siege Ram, Siege Andra, Heavy Scorpion. And you miss Halberdiers. So, you know, I do think the cost discount is great. But that's pretty much the only Siege unit that... You're getting any kind of a bump in. And because you're missing Siege Engineers, it's still not that overpowered. Um, it's above average, maybe. It's decent. But but you have a lot of flaws in your Siege Workshop. So I'm going to put them in the C tier. Next up, we have the Japanese. And I'm going to put Japanese in the B tier. But again, this is another one of these civilizations that it's more for... They have a one really strong option. Um, and... The thing with Japanese is that the Kataparudo technology in Imperial Age uh, that is unique to their civilization can increase the fire rate and the packing speed of your trebuchets, which means that this is another one of these technologies that can enable you to win those trebuchet wars and be able to take down enemy castles and buildings. You do get Siege Engineers. You do get Heavy Scorpion, so that's very good. And you also have top three Halberdiers and Swordsmen that, that you know, can defend your uh, your siege weapons very strongly um yeah it's it's a really strong it's a really strong civilization with a lot of unit diversity to help defend your siege weapons or whether your actual military units and the cataprudo trebuchets if you get to them uh, the technology isn't overly expensive um it's uh you know but so you can get to it i'm a little surprised we don't see it a bit more because it can provide such an advantage but you do see it from time to time so and when you do see it, it, it really rocks the house. So B tier for the Japanese, but they are one of the more limited B tier civilizations. Next up, the Khmer. Khmer are going to go into the A tier here. Um, so Khmer are very known for their scorpion play, right? That's the thing you want to know about the Khmer. Um, they're very known for their scorpions, and you have Siege Engineers, right, which is great. You have a Siege Ram, also great, uh, but the scorpions have extra range, and they can fire multiple bolts, which is quite good, and they also have the Ballista Elephant as a unique unit, which can also fire multiple bolts and benefit from that. You have Halberdiers, you have a great economy. Really, the only things you're missing are Siege Onager, which does can bite you in, uh, in maybe more closed map settings, and bombard cannons. Um, and the fact that, you know, 
And the fact, so the fact that scorpions are probably the weaker of the siege weapons, the fact that you're getting the bonuses there, um, it makes it a really great option for them, but it's just different to play. I think it makes it more of an A tier civilization. Okay, next up we have the Koreans. And I'm going to put Koreans in the S tier here. Uh, you know, there's a lot going for them. You have, you have siege engineers, you have uh, onagers that have extra range after an Imperial Age tech, but also less range due to a, their team, their, excuse me, less minimum range due to their team bonus. So your onagers are pretty versatile on the open field. You get bombard cannons, uh, halberdiers to defend. You know, if you're going war wagons, you have a really nice weapon to defend them. And also your, uh, your, uh, towers can also be a really nice way to help defend your siege because you get the automatic upgrades and you can get more range on them. So I think Koreans have a lot of options. Really the only thing that you're missing is, is, uh, is siege ram and you don't really have an economic bonus helping you out that much, but I think the options that Koreans have are so strong. It puts them and, and multiple, it puts them in the C tier. Excuse me, and it puts them in the S tier, not the C tier. Put them in the S tier. Um, speaking of a sieve that would like to end up in the C tier, but is going to be in the D tier, right? That's going to be the Lithuanians. Um, you know, basically, with Lithuanians, their only real option you have are bombard cannons without siege engineers. You miss siege ram, siege onager, heavy scorpion. Your early game eco bonus is really just helping you for you know, aggression with, say, like, scouts or a fast minute arms rush, not really helping you with siege, so easy D tier. Uh, Magyars, also going to be in the D tier. You do get siege engineers, which is nice. You do get heavy scorpions, which is cool, but you miss siege engineer, excuse me, you miss siege ram, siege onger, and bombard cannon. Um, Magyars are more of an anti-siege civilization, where, because of the Magyar Hussar, which can has an attack bonus against siege, but it's not necessarily got good siege themselves, so... Uh, and it doesn't have a real eco bonus, so it's pretty mediocre, and that'll put them in the D tier. Malay are interesting. I think Malay are more of... I think Malay are more of a B tier civilization, honestly. Um, you get Bombard Cannons and Heavy Scorpions with Siege Engineers. You can age up faster, which on closed maps can really help you get ahead of your opponent to get things out like Bombard Cannons. You have Halberdiers, Trash, Two-Handed Swordsman, if you research the technology for Force Levy. Um, that can help you save gold for Siege if you're going like Mass Two-Handed Swordsman and, uh, say, Bombard Cannons. That can be pretty strong. You're missing Siege Ram and Siege Onager, but I think you have some strong options with Malay. All right, next up we have the Malians, and I think Malians are actually quite nice. I'm going to put them into the A tier. Um, you have Bombard Cannon and Siege Onager, which is pretty unusual uh, combo. Um, to have, and but you do miss siege and siege ram, heavy scorpion, and the siege engineer's technology. But what really I think keeps them so I think we're probably looking at a really a B tier civ at, at first blush. But there are other bonuses, right? You're, you have save cost of wood on your buildings, so you're gonna have a lot more wood for siege. You have 30% more gold as a civ bonus, so we're already, we're already getting a lot more wood and gold, which is great for siege. And your infantry have higher pierce armor, right? So you can have champions and and pikemen with, uh, well, champions with eight pierce armor, and I believe it's pikemen would have seven, but still a lot of pierce armor. And so you can keep those, you know, those uh, infantry units alive, and and make them really strong. Uh, that and that maybe that can help you a bit versus say mass scorpions or something like that if you're dealing with it. So I think all of that. Takes Malians, and boom, bumps them up a tier. Interesting options. Next up with the Mayans. Mayans are, are going to be, unfortunately, one of our D-tier siege civilizations. You miss Siege Engineers, even though you do get Siege Ram and Heavy Scorpion. So you do have a couple of options, but without Siege Engineers, they're pretty lackluster. And, you know, you're missing everything else. Uh, you know, it's just not a very strong uh, civilization there. The Mongols, on the other hand, are going to be in the S tier. The thing with the Mongols... <laughs> what's the thing with the Mongols? The thing with the Mongols is that you have Siege Engineers. You have all your options at the Siege Workshop. You are missing Halbs, but you do have nice Mangadai Hussar to kind of 
mixed into there. But the thing is, is that you have the drill technology, which makes your siege move uh, faster. And that can be insanely strong. And yeah, that can be really, really strong for the Mongols. Um, and, you know, you can overwhelm people with siege ram pushes or siege onager pushes and just drive up and down the field, uh, you know, like you're cruising down the strip on a Friday night. So that's a uh, Mon Mongols are going to be, in my mind, they are an easy, easy uh, S tier civilization. Now, next up, we look at the Persians, and Persians are good. I think I gotta put them, I think Persians do go into the B tier because they have a decent diversity of options. Um, you do get Siege Ram, Bombard Cannon, and Heavy Scorpion. That's nice, right? But And you are missing Siege Onager, but you have kind of three interesting options there. And you get full upgraded halberdiers. You do have trash bows. Um, so you can have crossbowmen that cost uh, uh, that don't cost gold. Just cost a little extra wood. Which can be nice. The problem is you're missing siege engineers. Um, I, like, I just like the amount of options that you have. But the problem is that you have like three good options from your siege workshop. But... But without Siege Engineers, they are all kind of mediocre. So I think you got to be careful. But I do think you cover your bases pretty well with the Civ. And I think with Persians, that's enough for B tier. All right. Next up, we have the Poles. And I got to put the Poles in the B tier as well. Um, I really like some of their options here where... Let me think about them for a second. Yeah, so you have Bombard Cannon and Siege Ram with Siege Engineers. That's great. And you have good Halberdiers. You have the Oboe Unique Unit, which can be a fantastic in a Siege Ram push. And you also have really interesting economic bonuses where your Stone also, your Stone Miners also create gold. You have Full Works that can get you more food collection. It's just you're missing Siege Onager and Heavy Scorpion. But I don't value Heavy Scorpion all that much. I think it's one of these civilizations, I think it's still a B tier, but I think it's worth recognizing that with some of the units that the Poles have, there is a lot of great synergy. Especially, I think, like Obu Siege Ram. Um, Obu oh, have a lot of Pierce Armor, a lot of HP, and do really well against a lot of different units. So you have good synergy, and you can go Halbs too, it's fine as well. So I still think it's a B tier, but it might be one of the best B tier uh, Siege civilizations. Next up, the Portuguese. Portuguese are going to be in the A tier. Well, let's think about this. So here's the thing about Portuguese. Portuguese are an A tier civilization more because they, they do have a really dominant first option. Um, and that they have Bombard Cannons with Siege Engineers. But they have the Archibus technology that basically gives them ballistics. They have Organ Guns as a unique unit, which kind of functions as a heavy scorpion for them in a lot of ways. Um, but they are missing Siege Ram, Siege Onager, and Heavy Scorpion, but the Organ Gun kind of makes up for it. The real thing with the Portuguese, though, is you have a minus 20% discount on military units. So even in Castle Age, you can get a lot of Siege out. It really, Siege is so expensive, especially on the gold front. That really helps you if you're Portuguese. And so I think that that fact alone, that cost discount, it makes your Siege so much more viable, especially getting to... Bombard Cannon, so I gotta put them in the A tier. Staying in the A tier, we'll uh, go with the Saracens. Um, Saracens have a lot of options, right? They have Bombard Cannon, Siege Onager, and Siege Ram with Siege Engineers. And, you know, can we count Arbalist's Siege here? I mean, maybe we can. <laughs> I'd kind of like to, because their Arbalists do extra damage against buildings. Um, you know, you do miss Heavy Scorpion. The Market Bonus can be a nice... Uh, can be a nice boost to, to get technologies. You're also missing halberdiers, though. And I think that's really important because it's hard to make to make camels to defend siege because you're spending so much gold. Because siege weapons are a lot of gold. Um, yeah. So I think missing halberdiers is actually really, really important and is a big flaw. And you combine that with missing something like heavy scorpion. I do think that that can put Saracen's 
that can keep them out of the S tier. But I think still, you do have a diverse set of options, and they're good options. And that's an A tier Siege Civ for me. Okay, next up, Sicilians are going to go stay in the A tier. You have Siege Honors with Siege Ram, Heavy Scorpion with Siege Engineers, Halberdiers that take less bonus damage. And you have some good economic bonuses that help you, uh, 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 you know, delay reseeding farms. And that gets you more wood. You can get more boomed up quicker because you're putting down town centers faster. So I think Sicilians have a, some decent economy to get there. Uh, but you're not really getting a good bonus to your siege. So if we compare it to, say, like the Mongols or the Bulgarians that have nice bonuses that affect their siege workshop directly, um, whether it's faster siege with the Mongols or really cheap upgrades with the Bulgarians. Sicilians, you're not getting that. And you're also missing Bombard Cannon. So you still have that weakness. And your siege just is, it's good, but it's just not overwhelming. And that's A tier. Now, Slavs, on the other hand, uh, are going to be easy, easy S tier for me. Um, you know, comparing it to the uh, the Sicilians for a minute, right? Siege Engineers with Siege Honors or Siege Ram and Heavy Scorpion, right? Okay. So, so we're talking about an A tier Civ there. Uh, they also have fantastic Halberdiers, especially in the late game with the Trezina to defend. Uh, great economy. And they're missing Bombard Cannon. So what puts Slavs in the S tier? It's the 15% cost discount on your Siege. Boom. Easy S tier. All right, next up, we have the Spanish. And I think Spanish, I think I got to put Spanish in the C tier. Um, so your Bombard Cannons have a faster firing rate, which is good because they fire notoriously slow. Um, and you do get Siege Rams and you get Halbs, which are nice, right? So right there, we'll kind of be talking about a B tier Civ. You miss Siege Onager and you miss Heavy Scorpion. But the real thing that knocks them down to the C tier is that you also miss Siege Engineers and you don't really have a good economic bonus. Um, that really hurts. If they had Siege Engineers, I think you could easily make a case for them being B tier. Uh, but without it, I think it knocks them down to C. Okay, next up we have Tatars. And Tatars are super interesting. Um, one of my favorite civs to play, just in general. Um, Tatars are a civilization. They get there. They have fantastic trebuchets. You get Siege Engineers, so that gets you some more range. But your Imperial Age technology, which is not very expensive to merge Siegecraft, gives your trebuchets plus two range. So <laughs> that's really good. Uh, you have these great, like, Steph Curry trebs that can destroy castles from a distance. You could build your castles a little bit further away from other civilizations, other bases, if you're going for a forward castle, which is actually pretty important. But what a lot of people don't know about... Uh, Tatters is you also have Siege Ram and Heavy Scorpion. And infantry masses can become a problem for Tatters. So uh, you have a multitude of options and you get Siege Engineers to make those options really strong. You know, you miss Siege Andre, you miss Bombard Cannons, but I think you have enough um, with Tatars to really make it a good, uh, a good A tier Civ. It's not perfect, but you have some really strong options. Okay, next up we have the Teutons and... For Teutons, I think you got to put them into the S tier. So really all you're missing from the Siege Workshop is the Siege Ram. And that is important, but, you know, Bombard Cannon, Siege Honors, or Heavy Scorpion is great. With Siege Engineers, that's great. Your Castle Age technology gives your Siege Weapons extra armor. So we're staying alive out there. Shout out to the Bee Gees. And you have really nice infantry, whether it's Halbs or Champions to defend. And cheap farms that save you wood, and that's really helping you in the mid to late game, which which is the time you're going to be making siege. So, Teutons, S tier Civ. Now, Turks, I think Turks might be the most difficult one to discern here in terms of where to put them. I'm going to put them into the A tier, but... So, here's the thing. You are missing Onagers and Siege Onagers, so you're only getting Mangonel. And you don't, not only do you miss Halbs, but you miss Pikemen to even defend your siege. So already we're not in a good place. But you have Bombard Cannons that your Imperial Age technology gives them plus two range, which is nice. And you get free chemistry to immediately start making them, right? Which is fantastic. Um, and you have faster gold mining to get gold units out in the field faster. So Turks are one of these civilizations that you always feel like in late game you're on a timer. 
And fortunately, the bonuses here are helping you get the Bombard Cannons that are very, very strong, that have great range, and that's really helping you get them on the field faster. And that is, can be Turk. Bombard Cannon pushes can be really, really overwhelming. It's an incredible power spike. I think you want to compare this sieve to the Cumans in that way. And also, it's worth noting, you do also get Siege Ram. So you can go Siege Ram. You still have multiple options. And so I think that's gonna good enough for the A tier. Um, Vietnamese, I think Vietnamese, I, hmm, I think Vietnamese have to go into the D tier. Um, you do have Bombard Cannons with Siege Engineers, but you miss Siege Onager, Siege Ram, and Heavy Scorpion. So a lot of our, uh, you have a nice option, don't get me wrong. And, but your Eco Bonus, you know, it is saving you some wood, which is good. I just don't think it's enough. You're pretty reliant at that point. Uh, you know, you might, maybe it's the strongest of the, the, the D tier sieves, maybe Vietnamese and Indians. I think you can make a case for both of them to put them into the C tier, but it, it just feels a bit weak. And lastly, we have the Vikings. Vikings. I think Vikings got a premier or a B tier. Um, you know, you do get siege ram and heavy scorpions with siege engineers. And so that's nice to have, right? So you have, you know, a couple good options. You do have Siege Engineers, so you're making them stronger. You have really good Pikemen, even though you don't get the Halberdier upgrade. You have more HP. You have the Chieftain's technology to make up for some of the bonus damage. And you just have a fantastic economy with Vikings. And that's one of these things that without the Viking economy, even with like a lesser eco bonus, I think it's C tier. But Viking economy, you have the resources to get the kind of units on the field in late castle, early imp that your opponent just can't. And that's enough to put them in the B tier for me. So this is our tier list here, right? Um, and pretty, uh, you know, pretty as pretty well rounded in terms of the game. Uh, we have a lot of sieves in each category, so it, it's a pretty, uh, it's a pretty uniform distribution here for the most part. So um, with that being said, right, I hope you've really enjoyed the tier list video, uh, and we have more content coming your way. Uh, some, uh, I have a lot more tier list. But I also have a lot some other videos that I'm going to be putting out too as well. So we are uh, we're growing as a channel. I really appreciate all the support and uh, civility from everybody uh, in the chat and who's contacted me. Um, so yeah, so I uh, hope to see you guys around out there on the ladder, in-game somewhere. And, uh, and you guys have a great day. Take care.